Party, Trump supporter Harlan Hill and Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall joining me right now. Good to see you guys. Harlan, Good to see um, you. you know, I, we don't know what's going to happen in this election. And I would point out that, you know, any time that anybody's counted Donald Trump out, you know, he's come back blazing. Yeah. So that could still happen here. But if it doesn't, I mean, what A.B. was getting to is that, you know, there's this base that loves Trump, loves everything he stands for. And then there's this independent side of some voters or the Mitt Romney Republicans that you need to bring in. What happens going forward to this party if Donald Trump does not succeed and if the Democrats actually take the House and Senate? Well, for one, I think that Hillary Clinton will be a one term president. Um, you know, we're facing unprecedented economic challenges. Her policy are is a, it's a continuation of Obamanomics, which have overwhelmingly failed the middle class. And so I think that long term, this is probably good for the Republican Party. The next uh, election will be uh, a totally different outcome. And I think that you'll have a different person at the top of the ticket that's perhaps a little bit less polarizing. But still brings in that middle class voter that has felt so disenfranchised over the last couple of decades? They, they have to. I mean, they, look, Donald Trump has been really successful at identifying identifying these voters that have been forgotten. And a lot of them are former Democrats, like myself. And these are people that are now registered Republicans or they're considering joining the party. And to leave them behind would be a missed opportunity of a lifetime. It, it's amazing to me. It, Leslie, I've said this to you, you know, throughout, the way he has succeeded in, you know, really reaching out to core Americans, Americans that are struggling in this economy, and making uh, the Republican Party or the conservative uh, economic thought of lower taxes, for example, something that, you know, people really embrace in a way that doesn't feel elitist. I mean, I think that's been the challenge for this party for so long, that it's seen as a party of just the elites, let them eat cake. He's flipped that all on its head. So how does the Republican Party preserve it? <laughs> well, one of, one of the things is the Republican Party needs to have a candidate that not only uh, can speak to the working class, but also can speak truly to the evangelicals and the huge uh, voter population that is growing, and that is Latinos, African Americans, and women. And Harlan, I know you got a crystal ball there, buddy, but I disagree with the one term because it definitely depends on not only what happens in the next four years, it depends on uh, who they put up as a candidate. Right now, Donald Trump, like you said, Trish, he's got that core supporters. The problem is, 40% does not get him the magic number. She's leading in electoral, she's leading in battleground states, and she's leading, uh, we just saw wow. a, a double as of lately, that she has nationally. As of lately. But, you know, it, Leslie, I think it's the continue. polling has been just wild and it's been all over the place. You look at where he was recently, he was actually either tied or ahead of her. A and now this, this plummet, really, which is all one has to assume related to that tape, uh, I guess you got to look at whether or not he can be the comeback kid here, whether he can turn it around. He certainly had a better performance last night in that debate uh, and really challenged her in many ways, Harlan, that might make it uh, more difficult for her between now and Election Day. Your thoughts? Can he, can he pull it? together in, in time? Absolutely. I mean, what we saw, his best moments last night were actually not the mudslinging. It's when he was talking about specifically uh, specific policy. He pointed to her record as a U.S. senator and said, why didn't you achieve any of the, the, the line items that you're laying out now? If you think that tax reform is needed, why didn't you propose tax reform? If you think jobs should be uh, you know, brought back and you think the trade deals have gutted the middle class in this country, why didn't you do anything about it uh, for the almost decade that you were in the U.S. Senate? All right, I've and, got one. Yeah. It, you know, if you really think the Russians are, are hacking you, yeah. Hillary. Why on earth do you use uh, your own <laughs> private email server that clearly isn't secure? Great um, anyway, he, he didn't go there, but uh, he did it in some other ways, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, just last word to Leslie here. Um, you know, the, the, the campaign, uh, the, the election day, rather, I should say, is fast approaching. He's going to have one more opportunity out in Vegas. I'll be there. Lou will be there. Neil will be there. Maria will be there. Uh, we're going to have full team coverage there. It's the Fox News debate hosted by, uh, moderated by Chris Wallace. What can he do between now and then to really start to reverse things, uh, putting on your you know, conservative strategist hat for a moment, Leslie? 
<laughs> uh, well, one is he needs to be uh, more like he was uh, last night, but with less personal attacks. I think you're just looking at the polls and the way things have been trending. The personal attacks are not helping him. Uh, these tapes definitely lost him some of that base, and not just female, but men that say, hey, I have a wife, I have a daughter. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. So he needs to stay on point and on course from a conservative perspective. And in addition to that, he needs to be more prepared for the next debate with specifics and strategy on the issues when a question is asked to have the answer and not just the solution, but how it's going to be paid for, because that seems to be what the American people want to hear from both the candidates. All right. Thank you so much, Harlan and Leslie. I'll see you guys in a little. Cure email server, Mrs. Clinton. Harlan Hill and Leslie Marshall are back with me on this one. I mean, it, come on, Leslie, what was that whole bit about Lincoln? Did she get completely caught off guard, do you think, with that question? All right, you're not going to like my answer, Trish, but I took it very differently and not just because I support her. I didn't find blame. I found her saying, okay, this is the context in which I said it. Let me give another example that I think she should have gave that was a better example. I think as politicians, there are their personal feelings on an issue or maybe personal feelings on an issue they know is best for the country and then how they propose it to the American people or to Congress to get it passed. Let me give an example. Vice President uh, nominee Tim Kaine personally pro-life, uh, pro publicly uh, is uh, practicing for the uh, best interest of his people what the law is and what he believes and for his party, privately doesn't necessarily feel mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look back to legislation yeah. and the Democrats' health care and other issues. I guess that, would be that you know, this, look, for anyone else, you might give him a pass. The problem is, Leslie, and I'll, I'll let Harlan take this one, it's Hillary Clinton who has shown over and over again that she and her husband have a very uh, loose relationship, shall we say, with the truth. So shouldn't she have been better prepared for some kind of explanation after the WikiLeaks thing came out, uh, rather than just blaming Abe Lincoln and the Russians? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what's most concerning about this is that these emails through WikiLeaks are a window into who the real Hillary Clinton is. For a long time, we've speculated, mm -hmm. um, but now we, we've seen the, the DNC protectionism that came out of that batch of WikiLeaks, the uh, open borders and, the, and you know, the, the promises that she's made to different uh, Wall Street bankers in, in quarter million dollar speeches. And so I, this is a, a fantastic opportunity to see who the real Hillary Clinton is and have the evidence to back up our claims. Yeah, and again, you know, we're still going through these thousands of emails. Reporters are still going going through these thousands of emails. Uh, there's a lot of content there that, that WikiLeaks dumped. Absolutely. But you're right. I mean, it is giving everyone a window. And, you know, I, I keep looking at her and I question, I question, Leslie, who she really is. I mean, this is someone who was a Barry Goldwater supporter who then became very, very left, uh, who ran a campaign against someone Harlan used to support, Bernie Sanders, who, you know, look, I don't agree with him. I, I, I don't think socialism is the direction we want to take this country in at all. But at least he's always stood for it. She, on the other hand, uh, has really tried to play it middle of the road until that primary where she was coming out sounding like a socialist herself. And, and people are betting that that is the direction she wants to take us in. I don't know. So how do I vote for her if I don't really know who she is? Well, I think the same can be said uh, for Donald Trump, quite frankly. When we look at the inconsistencies that he has said, and we have tapes of the things that he has said uh, with regard to being pro-life or pro-choice for against the war in Iraq, uh, the, the list goes on. Both of these people, Trish, as you know, uh, have an issue with trust among voters. He worse than her. Uh, and these WikiLeaks emails, not all, some like you guys mentioned, and, and kudos to Fox for that, um, have verified those that you're reporting on. Uh, but not all of them have been verified. Unlike Donald Trump, where I think a lot of people are saying, who is this? guy as well. I think that is a question they're asking about both these people. Uh, but when we look at the polls and the number of people that have dropped out against uh, Trump since Friday, mm -hmm. I, I would say quite frankly that his comments have been more damning than the revelations from WikiLeaks about her comments to those well, at Goldman you know, to Sachs a in a speech as well, or the I emails. Mean, that's in part just the function of the story, the nature of the story. I mean, Harlan, the yeah. media mm -hmm. has gone wall to wall <laughs> with those comments yeah. because, you know, it's like the, the recipe for yeah. a, a perfect sensational story. Absolutely. So of course you're going to cover it in uh, in a depth and in a length that you know frankly it takes a lot of work to go through all those emails from WikiLeaks sure. yeah. so and and it's dry stuff it's you know yeah. you know speeches to Wall Street banks and right. so it doesn't have say the same panache that uh, the other story has but it, is that a problem in that the media is focusing too much 
on Donald Trump's comments and not enough on who she really is via these emails. Well, luckily, I think some people in the media are actually responsibly covering this. And if you take one specific issue that I think is probably the biggest issue in this election, trade, um, you know, she said that she opposed it, uh, but she, we know that she negotiated TPP on behalf of the Obama administration. She called it the gold standard 40 something times. We see her in these speeches saying that she wants a hemispheric common market and open borders. So the window into the real Hillary Clinton is very clear if you just drill down and look at very specific issues. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Harlan, Leslie, good to see you guys.